I'm talking to you this morning on a walk with God. Somebody say, a walk with God. Walking with God. I have walked with God for a long time, at least since 1995. The road has not been that smooth, but it's a journey I will always want to embark on. The reason why I say the road has not been smooth is that there have been times that in walking with God, you will fail God. But the fact that you fail him, that doesn't mean he has failed himself. He is there whether you want to be there or you don't want to be there. And if you read your Bible, you will know that the person who wants the relationship is not you, it's God. Why do I say that? The first sin ever recorded in the Bible. It please, it's as usual. I'm not preaching, I'm talking. So don't tell me I've not quoted Bible first to start. Your homiletics and all those things, I've put it aside. This is conversation. The first sin ever recorded in the Bible was when Adam and Eve sinned. And when Adam and Eve sinned against God, the Bible said it was God who came down to visit them in the garden. It's God who came down. And when God came, he realized that the place he used to meet Adam, Adam was not there. So he said, Adam, where are you? He asked, where are you? Because normally around three o'clock we pray. Normally around six we talk. Normally around nine o'clock we have a meeting. So, if you always have a meeting around this time, why am I there and you are not there? Now, the reason why Adam did not meet up on his date with God was Adam had sinned. So, sin has the ability to make you miss your time with God because sin makes us do two timing. Are you understanding me? So, let me move on. So, God came to the usual location that man meets. God and Adam was not there. And as usual, I think if it is today, God will pick your phone and say, Sweetheart, where are you? Adam, where are you? Say, I saw you, I've seen you, but when I heard your voice, I'm afraid, so I went to hide. And when Adam said, I'm afraid, I went to hide, the next thing God said, But who told you you are naked? Because it takes nakedness to hide. It takes nakedness for you to hide. Now, who told you are naked? And then Adam said, it is not my fault, it is the woman. That's what brought the whole problem on earth because even though God knew that man has sinned, God came to man as though man has done nothing wrong. Why? Because sin consciousness has an effect on your relationship with God. Sin consciousness has an effect on your relationship with God. So God didn't even want to talk about a sin. But I, God expected Adam to have said that I have sinned against you. My God, can I have another chance? How do I redeem myself? Before God knew, Adam has had his own remedy. He's gone for some fig leaves, covered his nakedness, and was still hiding from God. And something what happens to most people is that they don't come to church or they don't go to prayer meeting because they are in sin. And they say that because I'm sinning, of course I've sinned, let me not go to church. I see if God dwells in a building. That is not a reason to hide from God. I, I nearly said it, but I was asking myself a question when I got on stage that somebody is not in church. And that's the Holy Spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit that Friday evening the person did something. Well, the person is in the choir. And one of the things the Lord told me is that one of these is you will have to say some of these things and bring the people publicly so that people will start misbehaving well. Mercy is not in church. Is there any church member called Mercy? But there's an angel of mercy here. The person didn't even come to church today. So so those of you who are in church, you are not one of them. I'm sure you start looking at all queries that so didn't come to church. 
Actually, one is in the choir, and the lady is also a church member, but the lady is not in the choir. Is the male who is in the choir? Can we stop there? And where was I? <laughs> so, 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 like, oh, let me hold on for like three days, one week, and then I'll start going to church. Now, that three days and the one week is very terrible for you because David said, a day in your course, in your presence, is more than 10,000 days outside. So, not getting close to God for a minute is dangerous for your life. And today, I'll trust God to give you about, if there is time, 20 benefits you get from being in God's presence. So, so when you rather move away from God, it's like, it's like a child who misbehaves at home and says that if I go home, mommy will beat you or daddy will beat you, so I won't go home. The danger of mosquitoes beating you, being raped, being arrested by the police, joining bad gang is more terrible than you going home and letting your parents give you some small knocks. They give you some small knock, you still are in the house. Is it true or is it not true? Or is it true or is it not true? Yeah, it's true. But most of it, what we do rather is that we think by staying further away from God, um, we will be successful. But the truth is that the further you move away from God, the more trouble you will get in. So James chapter 4, verse number 8 says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh to you. Now, um, I watch these things a lot myself now. Let's take it. I, 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 I enter the auditorium and people stand up because F.D. Yali has come in. And I feel so honored. And I realize that what you do for people, people will do for you. What you do for people, how you honor people. Like let's say, they say honor a mother. I say me, I will not honor any mother. Be a one share me. You to somebody too will not honor you some. And you too, you can't take care of everybody. You will take care of some and leave some. <laughs> Is it true? It's not true. So if you are not careful, you, the way the way you treat people, that's so the Bible said, draw nigh. Can I have the NLT version? Um said, draw closer. Okay, let's read. Come close to God and what? And God will do what? God will do what to you? Come close to you. So if you move far away, what do you, what will he also do to you? So what will he do? So look at even the devil. If you read your Bible very well, you know that when God met his children, Satan also came. I didn't tell the God that I'm the chief sinner. So I'm not. He said, you said all your children must come. I'm here. And he was the only one who was bold enough to still have interaction with God concerning Job. He drew near and asked God, gave God a prayer request and God granted him partial Request. So draw, oh, please stay there. Draw nigh to God, come close to God, and God will do what? I didn't hear you. Let's go read. Today they didn't give me TV, so let me come here. I don't know what has happened to them. They didn't give me TV today. They are born again. Come close to God, and God will what? Come close to you. Then he said, Wash your hands. Say, Wash your hands. I didn't hear you. Say, Wash your hands. I didn't hear you say, wash your hands. I didn't hear you say, wash your hands. Now, in P4, our elders say something that if you know how to wash your hands, you eat with great people. You sit with great people. If you know how to wash your hands. So this place is not just talking about physical washing of hands. It's talking about the protocols and the ethics of relating with God. The protocols and the ethics of relating with God. If you are eating with somebody and you take your left hand and you put it into the food or you put your hand into your nose and when you finish you dip it into the food, you are not going to be called next time. They can leave their food for you to continue eating. But the probability that you will not be at the next meal is great because you don't understand the protocols and ethics of relating with great people. Now when you go to even sitting, um, you go to 
a dining with great people, you, you people don't know that you don't start eating because you're hungry. Your host must either say eat or serve himself first before you serve. No matter how hungry you are, you don't go and say that ah, we are chicken and now you're good. Then you take one and chew and say, ah, and before they come, you're already full. No. And all these protocols will give you another access to God or not to God. And so he said, wash your hands. Someone said, wash your hands. I didn't hear you say, wash your hands. I didn't hear you say, wash your hands. Yeah, know how to relate to God. Know how to respond to God. I heard something from Ben Hain that shocked me. He said that he and his wife, their praying times are different. He said his wife gets up around 3 o'clock and prays to, let's say, 6. As for him, no, 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 no. That's the time he sleeps his night. When he wakes up, before he will pray, he has to brush his teeth. The room must be cleaned. He must bath. And then he will eat before he goes to pray. Meanwhile, the wife can get up straight away without brushing her teeth and going to prayer. Now, these two, you wonder, what has brushing your teeth got to do and bathing? Now, Benahin, maybe, I don't know, but listening to him, I'm sure he will say things like, if he's praying and he has not brushed his teeth, he has not bathed, the room has not been cleaned, he has not eaten, he'll be wondering, so what am I going to eat? <laughs> what? So when am I going to bath? So all this you have to do before I go to town. So he does all those things before what he prays. Now that is personally how he has learned to relate to God. So I keep telling people that it is not enough for a man of God to teach you about God. You must also come to a place of knowing how you can relate to God on your personal level. Because there are things God will tell Samson. God will not tell you. There are things that God will tell you personally that has to do with your personal life on how to relate with him. That's why you see some people, they are doing certain things and yet they are breaking through. You do some and that is your end because they have built a personal rapport with God. Can I hear somebody say, Lord, help me? So he said, come close to God and God will come what? Close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Now what I see me say, your loyalty is divided. Because see, you can never come to God and your flesh. There are two parts of you. You can never touch God with your body. You can never touch God with what? You can only touch God with your spirit. Never touch God. Some say, ah, God is not talking to me. God doesn't talk to this body. God doesn't talk to you. God doesn't speak to this ear. It's not this ear. Now, when the Bible said, they that have ears, which human being doesn't have ear? They that have ears, let them hear what the spirit is saying to the church. It means that there is an ear which is not this ear. And this ear is the ear you see in the dream. The person you see in the dream, that person has ear. That person has eyes. So God doesn't speak to this um, your, our body. He speaks to your spirit man. So when you are going to go into walk or prayer with God, there is the part of you which is this physical body and there's a part of you which is the one you see in your dream. And one wants to be with the world and one wants to be with God. Am I teaching well here? So you realize as soon as you start praying, then somebody will start talking to you. That Don't you think that you need to check your phone if you have a message? Don't you think that you have to see if your tap is flowing. You can hear. Shh. You go outside as if it's raining. You go outside, it is not raining. Because your, your ears, your spiritual ear had rain. You go outside, it is not raining. Now you come back and you realize that to get back to where you started from is gone. Where you left off, you are no more there. 
So you are going to struggle again to get into that place again. But if you have a spiritual ear, you have a spiritual understanding, you will know that you had rain because God is coming in the form of a rain. Am I teaching something here at all? Am I teaching somebody here at all? So let's take it that you start praying. And as you are praying, I don't wonder whether it has happened to you before. As you are praying, oh Lord, I want to draw closer to you. As you are praying that God wants to get closer to you, then you start thinking about a particular guy or a particular lady. It's not true. It's not true. Forgive me. It's not true. Oh, it's true. Uh, then you realize that your whole body composition is changing. I think I'm not speaking the truth. Then you say, I think God wants me to talk about marriage. No, it is no marriage matter. Now, what is happening is that the other part of you is trying to resist your attendance to God. What we call God saying that, why, where are you, Adam? Because God was not, God doesn't speak to Adam by the body. God speaks to Adam by the spirit. So sin is what activates the flesh higher than the spirit so that your communication to God will be cut off. It's like you are doing mobile phone call and as you are doing the call, you are doing then the line will drop. The line will drop. The line will drop. And sometimes I realize that most of the time when you need to make a serious call, that is when lines begin to misbehave. It's not true. Is it true? <laughs> when you need some serious information, that's when your data will not work. The days you don't need it, it will work. May God deliver us. I say, may God deliver us. So, our loyalty comes in and let's look at something in um, Romans chapter 8, I believe in verse number 5. Let me cross check. 5 and 6. You see that that is the time that your flesh is trying to war with your spirit. Your flesh can never yield to God. Neither can it be no matter what you do. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at from verse 5. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about what? I didn't hear you. Let's read it again. Think about what? But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about what? Things that what? Pleases the Spirit. So at this stage, your spirit wants to communicate with God. Hey, I said I'll be the same thing, but it's becoming different. <laughs> your spirit wants to communicate with God. But your flesh also wants to communicate with you. That's why you remember that your rent is due. Now say, remember that you have not called this girl. Is it true? It's not true. Now say, remember that the things you, you decided to wash are still in the water. Before praying and you were watching the movie, those thoughts never came. Now something, if you don't wash, you see what will happen to you. So you have to leave whatever. It's like the flesh wants you to live. And Bible said, so what is happening is that the flesh wants to control you like Adam so that you will not hear God. But that's the time to tell the flesh that I am not going to allow you to control me. I will still let my spirit live. So if you keep practicing that moment, what happens is that gradually and gradually your spirit overwhelms the physical body and your spirit begins to have attention with God. May this be your, um, your direction. Amen. So, verse 16, so letting your spiritual nature control your mind leads to what? Death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to what? Life and peace. So you are not having peace in prayer. Do you know that it's very easy to pray binding and losing? That's why you can pray for hours. Because Satan doesn't have a problem with that one. You will never see Every witch, every witch, I stand against me, I stand against me, die by fire, die by fire. I bombard you, I bombard you, I molest you, I molest you. Pray. You never sleep. Now tell this person that let's have fellowship with God. Because that's what we do is no prayer. 
read the whole New Testament. See where they use tongues to bind witches and wizards. You never find it there. Tongue is a prayer language between only God understands. So why do you use it? Every witch, every witch, pray. Then you start speaking in tongues. Which witch understands that tongues? I don't get this. The part about it works, so they go. No, they don't go. The fire that you, you exert on yourself makes them leave for a while. They will meet you at the next when you are cold. <laughs> so you say, Pastor, I've gone for different. My compire, but my. They be a compire. That's they be a compire. Friday be a prayer meeting. Every, I go for prayer. No, you were not going for prayer. You going for warfare. And you are fighting. And most often, when you get into that thing, especially when you realize that the first time you control it, the next time when you begin to go into that level of prayer, and you begin to see that this area keeps occurring, now you started noticing something called stronghold. That is now you are recognizing what is a stronghold. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is the place Satan has fortified for himself. No, let me explain it better. A stronghold is a place that the spiritual hosts have fortified for themselves for or against you because there can be godly stronghold and there can be demonic stronghold. So Paul was teaching when he said the weapons of our warfare are not cannot. It's not flesh and blood. But mighty through God, they're pulling down a stronghold. So someone said, I'm going to pull down the stronghold in my family. What stronghold in your family? I'm going to pull down the gods, uh, the fetish in my hometown. Wait a minute. If you pull down the stronghold, you can burn, you say, they, they burn all the um, idols in my village. When they burn the idols, the spirit leaves the idols and goes to look for the next place to go and stay. It is the wood that is burnt. No spirit dies by burning. You didn't hear me. <laughs> oh, is it true? It's not true. Yeah. And even Jesus, when he was on the cross, God left him. So spirits can leave a body. And in Luke chapter 8, you read and you know that Jesus met the madman of gathering that had over 10,000 demons or spirits staying in him. So this guy, your, our human body has the ability to contain 10,000 spirits. 10,000. How many? 10, One person. So if you read Luke chapter is it 8 verse 1 or 2 or 2? It says that there was a woman by name Mary Magdalene that Jesus has cast out seven spirits. They the name was seven. Seven. So if seven can be in a person, 10,000 can be in a person. When you get into the presence of God, those spirits come up. They do what? Now, that has to be that you should stop praying. What you should do is that when this thing keeps occurring, I always tell people that when you get into some of this prayer, put a pen and a paper by you or your notepad or something. And when some of these things come up, write it down. Note them down. Note them down. Note them down. Why is it that any time you get into deep prayer, the person that comes to you and your body starts doing jiki jiki, honey chuku chuku, is your first boyfriend? It means there's a soul tie somewhere that must be broken. And most often, when you finish the prayer and you are so heavily in the spirit, the first person to call and find out how you are doing is that person. I just felt like calling you. It is not felt like. No, 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 no. The person we are expecting to call is the one who wanted to propose to you. But this one is calling. You finish prayer, Lord, we finish time with God, and you're expecting that you have a break to the first person to call you is those that you owe. Write that thing down. When you are done the, with the time with God, then you come to your normal chi, sort of chi, or your normal gun, or your normal airway. Then you say 
in the name of Jesus. Now you are powered. You are empowered. You power of darkness in my life. I command you out in Jesus name. And it is faith speaking. You end it there. Gradually you see that that spirit does not visit you again. Because you use power to deal with the spirit. But what you were doing initially. Binding and loosening without getting fuel into your car. The car didn't go anywhere. Yeah, you didn't understand me, so you can't clap. Oh, amen. amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. So, a lot of strongholds comes to mind. A lot of stronghold comes to mind when you get into prayer. I believe that. And you must note them and deal with them. If you are Moses and you've been with God for over 20 years, You've seen Red Sea opening. Can you hear me? Good. You've seen all kinds of miracles. Why will you go to God and tell God that if your presence does not go with me, I will not leave? So in, in Exodus chapter 33, 13, if it is true that you look favorable on me, let me know your ways. Some say know your ways. Now, how many of you know the way of God? The way of God. One of the things that will mandate you to go in the God's presence is to find out his way. Not your way. You see, let me give an example. How many of you want to get married? You don't marry by the person who gives you jiggy jiggy. The one that you meet and something is doing you. That is the flesh. <laughs> you are quiet. Somebody comes to tell you that hey, this business, everybody has done it and they succeed that you should try it. So you go and do it, you will fail. You will fail. Moses had been with God for years. He had just encountered God, gotten the Ten Commandments. He goes to God for a meeting because after he went to spend time with God, he only got down to find out that the people he left, they have become more troublesome than ever before. Can you imagine that this post saw Red Sea opening? At manna. What miracle did they not have? Moses says he's going to meet God and come. By the time he came, they've turned the church to disco. They have counted the male to female. And they realize that the females were more than the males. So they have given one is to three. And they were dancing naked. They were drunk, taking some more alcohol. Oh, it's in the Bible. Read it. They were just chilling. Then Moses realized that miracles does not change people. So Moses goes to God in chapter, this happened in chapter 32, goes to God in chapter 33 and says, if your presence does not go with us, we will not leave because miracles will never change you. <laughs> ah, we've seen people, he's one of them is here, who used to drink seriously. Their mother spoke. Their father spoke. Their family spoke. They insulted him. They did everything they would do to him. He would not stop. One day he says he's giving his life to Jesus. Now he doesn't drink. Now what happened to him? Why is that this person's life has changed? It is not, he might not tell you that eh, I went to church and I got a house. I, that is not it. That is not why he changed. Because when it comes to miracles, the devil also does miracles. But the difference between God's miracle and devil's miracle is that when God does a miracle for you and the presence of God is part of it, you love him more. When the devil does a miracle for you, you love the devil more. So if your marriage was really by God, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've seen people who God gave them miracles and the miracle is the reason why they stopped serving God Peter got I thought on it last time so many fish 
call his partners. The next thing Peter did was to kneel down and say, my Lord, my God, I'm a sinner. Get thee from me. And Jesus said, follow me. I'll make you precious. Of me. He left it and followed Jesus. You only earn five cities a year, but you never follow Jesus. Hear me, I was teaching the first service. Jesus is there. Judas comes. They can say, Who is Jesus Christ? He said, I am. The soldiers fell down. All the soldiers fell down with their accoutrements. When they woke up from falling under the power of God, they still arrested Jesus. Peter took a knife, cut one of them their ear. Jesus took the ear, put it back. The guy saw the ear back and said, Wow, you are wonderful. Still arrested Jesus and took him. So, the power of God doesn't change people. Pharaoh saw the power of God. Ten plagues. He still did not change. He still was Pharaoh. His firstborn son died. He was still Pharaoh. But what will change you? Is his presence. And Satan says, I will never allow you to get into his presence. Why? Because if you get into their presence, that is when there's the real change. And I've said this before. If within a year, at least, at least a year, you must spend minimum three hours a year, three times in a year with God. That is when you are an ordinary Christian. And a lock and key. Am I talking to somebody here? Moses said, God, show me your way. Can we read together? Verse 13, go. And Moses said, oh, and, oh go. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this nation is your people. You know why I said this nation is your people? Well, now, if you are a pastor, you left the church for only 40 days, one man 10 days, and you can find out that the members are still there, but all of them are backslided. After all the miracles you have done, that is when you know that what you need as a man of God is no power. Well, you need power. But power without his presence. The members will... Look, I have raised at least five dead people in Bridge since we started. Only one is still in church, Pastor Daniel. The rest, they left. Now, wait a All of them to the one I insult a lot is Pastor Daniel. The one I always have issues with it. The people, oh, oh, oh. So it will shock you that look at some say, Do you know his presence? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Take your seat. I felt the presence so much that sometimes in my room, whether in the office or home, People can't come near where I'm lying. People can't touch a door. It is so real. Sometimes the prayer comes where you are and you are just sitting there and you are crying. You don't know what it is. People think that you are sad or you've lost a property. What, what is this one? That's a presence. And it's not because they have put $1 million in front of you. You get out of the presence, you don't see money. You don't see breakthrough. But there's something that happens to you. There's an inner in feeling, which I'll be talking about very soon, that changes your metabolism, that changes your psychic, that changes your total mindset towards a certain angle, that you just come to a place of what we call knowing. Someone said knowing. I didn't hear you. Like the day I met my wife, I knew there was something about her after marrying her. The first day. I remember I was about to do Permi. You know, those days, if you're a pastor, you have to do sporting waves, like Pastor Chris. You know, Jerry, sporting waves. That is different from Pastor, um, uh, sorry, from Jerry. 
sporting news. We are about to do it and they brought it. And all of us, I told Pastor David, make sure she goes home. There's something about, I remember the first day I met Charles Davis' wife. She came for her and I said, this girl, there's something about her. Because of her, some people will come and be in the church. Years later, Mr. Fredado was in the church because of her. But you just come to the place of just knowing. You just see people. You, you don't know what actually it is, but you know. So Moses told God, I want to come to the place of knowing your ways. I want to know your grace. I want to touch your grace. So I may see your face. I want to see you. You, you want to see who? You, do you want to see? When you have not seen your boyfriend, you are watching picture. You have not seen God. You don't look for him in his word. May God have mercy on us. I can't hear you. Amen. Look, how many of you have been there and you miss dancing before the Lord? I say, Messiah, I have missed that prayer. You have been praying, you have not been praying, no. you've been praying. You are cool with God, but you missed that prayer. Which prayer is that? You know what I'm saying? Of you, you are lost. You are lost. Spirit, lead me where my spirit. Is that about us? Let me sing it. Take me deeper. When people are wanting deeper, you want to withdraw. Sing it, choristers. In the presence of Wait, 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 wait. You know what you mean for my trust with our bodies? You see, if you are dating somebody and you don't know who the person is, when the person is holding, please. When the person is that you hold it. <laughs> but when you, the trust comes, it doesn't matter where the person holds. So when he said that, Spirit, lead me where my trust with our body, he said, do as you please with me. If you boot me, I don't care. If you slap me, I don't care. This, this trust is without borders. There are no restrictions to what you can do with me. Do whatever. I just trust you that even things are not going well. There's something I feel inside me. I'm okay with it. I am yours. Hey! You are mine. Oh. Again, you start me out upon the waters, the great unknown. The great unknown. There's a place which is not known where feet may fail, where feet your strength will fail. You mean the mystery in ocean's deep. Your faith has never been standing. I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above. Which way? Which way? Things are coming. The flesh is coming. All kinds of ideas are coming to us. You have to do this. Then you tell him, I'm not moving. Ah, yeah. You are mine. I am. Uh, 
Look, look, let's be let's be romantic a bit. If you are dating somebody for days, for months, and find that person tells you, I'm yours, and you are mine, what does it mean? You've been calling this person for years. Find a person tells you, I am yours, and you are mine. Let me tell you, how many of you, let me, I know oh, you don't lift up. If you want to stop any addiction, you want to stop any addiction, stay in his presence, you will stop. Any addiction. No amount of advice can change it. No amount of laying hands. No, it's not, it's not like I lay hands on you. That thing doesn't change it too. You spend some time in his presence. It's like certain things natural. It's like going to chemotherapy. You go to the machine, you come, cancer is out. 